Hi, this is Sean. Welcome back to my channel. Press the like button, subscribe, share, comment. I am always looking forward to the dialogue. Thank you. Thank you to those of you who take time out of your day to respond to other people's comments, questions, and concerns. Thank you for helping me out. Thank you, everybody on the channel. Appreciate all of you. In today's video, we are going to be talking about whether or not you should speak English whether or not you should understand English at your post as a private security officer. Guys and gals, this is a subject that we need to talk about. I know that a lot of people don't want to talk about the subject because they are going to be perceived as a racist. Whenever you, whenever anybody talks about something like this, about whether you should speak English, people automatically, many people automatically assume you're a racist, you're a bigot, and what ends up happening is that discussion isn't discussed. So for me, I, I don't care, guys. I don't, I don't care what other people think about me. This is something that's very important. So the other day, so this, this is how this came about. The other day I was interacting with two private security officers. These guys were very professional. They had a situation where these guys these two guys were gang members actually were intimidating everybody inside of this restaurant and they've been doing this for years. And I'm glad that this restaurant, which I'm not going to name, I'm glad that they actually hired security. So these guys said, Hey, you know what? These guys, these gang members, okay. Are not going to intimidate anyone anymore. They're not going to intimidate us. Today is a day when we show them who's in control. So there was some type of, uh, not an altercation, but the security officers saw a knife being being brandished in, in, inside of this restaurant. Um, and it, it wasn't in a manner where it was threatening to other people. It was more of like this knife came out of one of these guys' pocket pockets and then was transferred to an, another pocket. Um, to these guards, to these officers, it was alarming. So they notified police and they told them to leave. I believe that they did an awesome job very professional but this is this is this is the problem though the first officer that i talked to didn't speak any english at all and the other officer spoke fluent english also spanish and assisted me with translating what the other private security officer said as well this post is a post where about 90% of the visitors speak Spanish. They understand Spanish, they converse in Spanish on a daily basis. So it does make sense hiring a bilingual private security officer. But what really frustrated me is that he didn't speak any English at all. And in California, this was what, what's more upsetting to me. In California, the guard card exam, a guard card is basically your private security guard registration. It's your permit that's needed to work private security in California. That test is not in Spanish. That test is in English. In California, as a private security guard instructor, you can assist your students with understanding the question. Um, you can translate it, but you can't give them the answers. And I just don't see how a guard card instructor in California, whoever taught this person, I just don't see them taking the time to, to translate each question and each answer choice. Um, when I did a lot more guard card training, I ha would have people um, email me, call me, and ask if the course is, is done in, in, in Spanish. And I tell them, no, it's not. It's done in English. Um, as a guard card instructor, that's you're taking a lot of your time away for that one student to translate. Now, there's there are guard card instructors that have that availability, that have that time, uh, and they have that that's that bilingual speaking spill, skill that are able to do that. But those are a dime a dozen. So I'm really wondering if was this private security officer was was he given the answers to the test, or were they properly translated? You'll you'll never know. I'll never know. So let's talk about, do we need to speak English at a post? So I'm a proponent for 
our guard force being able to communicate in the language that is conversed at, at the post. So if you have a post that's almost all, we'll, we'll say almost all Chinese, it would make sense to have a private security officer that understands Chinese, that's able to converse in Chinese. But what you don't want is a guard that only speaks um, a foreign language. And, and, and here is, is why. And this is where I draw the line between what a racist video would be and what my video consists of. Your guards on property need to speak English for this reason. So let's just say that you you work a post and and all the visitors speak, we'll just say um, Korean, right? They all, everybody speaks Korean at the post. It would make sense hiring a guard he, he or she does not have to be Korean, but able to communicate in Korean to this post where everybody speaks this, this, this language, even though we're in America. The problem is trespassers. You're going to have somebody from the outside coming to the inside that may not speak that language of the post. And this is where it, it becomes really a problem. And if you guys don't know already, I, I train, I mentor brand new police officers and every new training that I get for some reason they love to just speak Spanish to parties of crime suspects witnesses you name it um, but especially suspects or suspicious persons it it's almost always the commands are in Spanish because I work in a predominant Hispanic community <clears throat> where Spanish is the primary language so when we contact somebody Almost every time commands are given, if this is a situation where this person needs to be detained, um, almost every single time the trainee gives commands in Spanish. So here's a problem. Let's just say if a weapon is produced, a firearm or a knife, and you're in a challenged position, meaning that person isn't, well, it, this person could be a deadly threat to you, but you have some time. Maybe the gun is to the side. Or, the, or they're going to reach for the gun. They're going to reach for the knife. And you, st you still have that window of opportunity, that time, that reasonableness to make that command of stop, don't move. You want to say it, your first command needs to be in English. Because what's going to end up happening is you're going to give this command in Spanish, or at this make-believe post I'm talking about in Korean, you're going to give a command in Korean to this trespasser on the property, and this person is going to do the opposite of what you tell them, and then you're going to have to press the trigger. You're going to have to use deadly, you end up using deadly force because of a lack of understanding. This person doesn't understand the language that you have chosen to speak only at the post. So... I train new police officers, security officers, your first commands need to be in English. What are you going to say if you're in court? And this was a situation where you had time to, to give the suspect commands. And those commands, depending on whether or not the incident, your, your use of force was reasonable or not. If you're in that in that situation, what are you going to tell the jury? Well, I gave this person a command in, in Spanish because we're a predominantly Hispanic community. Well, they're going to get family members. They're going to testify. This person doesn't understand Spanish. This person only understands English. And the reason for that is because they live in America and English is the primary language spoken. This English is the official language spoken so if i'm in a community let's just say this is a, a community where spanish is spoken most of the time i give commands in english and then in spanish okay now i can testify that hey i gave commands in english because english is the official language of the united states of america and also because this is a 
community, uh, primary Hispanic community where a lot of people speak Spanish, I give commands also in Spanish. But you don't want to seem unreasonable. So always, always, the first commands are in, in English. Those of you who are hiring officers, security officers for unarmed post, an unarmed officer can still use force against somebody, reasonable force. You want to have the security officer tell this person in English, hey, stop resisting, or back, hey, back off, back off, back off. These commands show how reasonable you were during the situation. It needs to be in English first. For that reason alone, well, and other reasons that I discussed in this video, you want to hire guards who are either English only speaking or bilingual. And also, ladies and gentlemen, if you if you don't know a foreign language and you're assigned to a post where English is not the primary language that's spoken, please learn your commands in that language as best as you can. Obviously, perfect English, but try to try to teach yourself or try to have others teach you um, what the commands would be in that foreign language of that post where you're working at. It just makes you look a lot more reasonable. So let me know what you guys think. Should you hire or should we should we employ in our guard force private security officers that don't speak English on the post? Is this a racist ideology or is this a business necessity? Let me know, ladies and gentlemen. You guys all take care. Looking for a dialogue.